I'm Sonora. And I'm Mache. And you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 69. Yes, we reached that far and I got no good 69 jokes. So, joining me today will be Daniel Anthony. Happy 69th episode, Norman. Giggity! <laughs> I got one in. Awesome. So, how are you, Dan? I'm okay. In fact, pretty good. Oh, really? Oh, um, I'm having a creepy day. But we're not going to yeah, talk about my problems. Yeah, this is very problems. rare, so... I don't know, maybe it's the numbers of this episode that have caused this... Something cosmos. Uh, that... I feel mad, so I don't know what the gods are thinking. But you're half Chinese. Half is the point. <laughs> you didn't get the smart half, Dan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, uh, that's racist. So anyway, joining us... Hey, who to- started it? <laughs> I know, I'm just saying it to, to myself. So <laughs> anyway, Dan, um, since you got the guest for this week, mind introducing them to us? Alright, and so, our guests for the week are all the way from FOB Equestria. If you haven't heard of what FOB Equestria is, it is the little portal for military bronies. We have the FOB Equestria mail clerk, Santa, with us today. Hello. Hi, Santa, how are you? Uh, I'm all right. I didn't realize we were starting off with 69 jokes and racist jokes, but, you know, let's just, we'll keep it classy. Well, it's, this is a rare episode. Something has been reversed. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and also joining us is Miche. Miche from FOB Equestria. How are you? I'm pretty good. All right, then. So, back to you, Norman. Okay, guys. So... Before we start the show, oh man, I, I I wanted to ask you guys to do a 69 joke, but no, um, I'm classy that we... Well, it is a full moon outside, so I guess that's permitted. <laughs> Not on our side of the world, it isn't. <laughs> oh. uh, anyway, let's move on. So anyway... <laughs> the sun's out, what are you even talking about? <laughs> it's a full moon behind the earth. Okay. Actually, that means there's a full... Never mind. <laughs> anyway, My brain hurts. Anyway, <laughs> um, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four important questions. And uh, Santa, um, who's your favorite character? That's That's been one that everyone has consistently asked me, and I've never been able to give a, a solid response besides the, I like all of the characters. This it, is why we the... allow multiple choices. <laughs> um, I mean, Applejack's pretty nice, but, you know, I, every single one of the characters to be is kind of like is is deep and has their own uh, personality faults and benefits and they're just really all they're really all good characters to me. I don't have a worst pony and I don't have a favorite pony. I just like all of the all of them for their little individual uh, aspects, basically. Okay, that's a very political way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you, Mitch? Tis a secret. Ah, so the secret pony. So bubble butt then. How'd you know? <laughs> because I I know stuff. I, I know secrets. <laughs> it was just a wild guess. Is it true? Uh, no. Oh. However, she is my favorite background pony. Oh, okay. Well, right, I, I, so, yep. I, I'll just add Bubble Butt Pony into the list then. <laughs> Answer with hell. That's a, that's a first. <laughs> bubble Butt. Yeah, well, um, you should go to Ronyville. Let's see how they I, I deal with you. <laughs> so the second oh, question so is... you don't want to talk, huh? <laughs> No, not going there then, not going there. So anyway, the second question is, what's your favorite episode? So we'll start with Santa. That, that, that one also is pretty hard, but I guess I'll just exploit your multiple choice answers for this one. Yep. Um, Lesson Zero is is, is definitely a, a great one uh, of mine. That I, that it, It's really just fantastic all around. I actually thought the uh, season finale of the first one at the gala was pretty good. I do think Lesson Zero, Luna Eclipsed, and um, I think, what, what was it, Return to Harmony, the uh, Discord episodes, those were great. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the, those, the, all, those are, all those are pretty much top tier for me. Yeah, I can I actually, why. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people like the uh, uh, Canterlot Wedding a lot, but I, I do like it, but I, I wouldn't put it at the same top tier level as uh, the other ones. Hmm, okay, well, n- not sure. See, I-, I kind of like that episode, and I... Oh, it's a great episode. I'm just not saying it's the best of the best. Yeah, like, it's, it's true. It's, like, just under it. So yeah, it's like, I, I don't know why. Like, it, it, pretty much, yeah. Okay. I mean, for the love of God, it's got artillery strikes and a coup. <laughs> I, it's, that, that, has to, that has to mean something. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great to hear this from the military, Brony. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you think about it, the changelings are like orbital drops. Uh, they're like drop troopers. They're like paratroopers. They just crash into the ground <laughs> and then they come out. They attack everything. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> They look more like kamikaze, you know? They just go down and explode. Yeah, but they survive. <laughs> and make a death yeah. in the road like the Townsville's cardboard city. <laughs> <laughs> so. They're basically, basically pony ODST. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, Mitch, what about you? Well, this one's a hard one between my two, so I think I have a clear leader. I'm going to have to say Cutie Mark Chronicles. Ah. Oh, I can understand with, why. With, um... With uh, Return to Harmony as a very close second, because Discord is probably my favorite villain of all time. True, but true. But Cutie Mark Chronicles, I mean, you get to see... It, it, it's full of da. It's just so adorable. No, that is true. That is true. People love the da's. So, moving on to my third question. Santa, how did you become a fan of the show? Uh, I became a fan of the show... Uh, when just before I deployed to Afghanistan, and I was in my barracks room with pretty much nothing to do, and I was wandering through, uh, I think it was like, I was a fan of Failblog at the time, and ah. eventually, you're at right, I, I, I wandered into the My Little Brony section, and then I started looking at the, the uh, uh, pictures there, and it seemed pretty entertaining to me. So at one point, they, uh, they released a clip of uh, Dragon Shy, the episode, and it was just the very end clip where uh, Fluttershy starts talking back to the dragon, and uh, if I remember correctly, uh, he starts the, she starts talking back to the dragon, and then the the dragon just becomes like a puppy and like gets really small. And I just really remember how much I was laughing when uh, the dragon said, "What the rainbow what kicked me." It is a good line. Yeah, it is. And, uh, I, after that, I decided, okay, that was too... That's not a word! Good. I, I have to give this show a, uh, a a chance. And I watched the first two episodes, and it was like, eh, sometimes, sometimes a little bit too girly for me. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. And then on the third episode, that was the uh, Ticketmaster. Um, Rarity's uh, girlish uh, need for having makeovers and stuff, that was a little bit weird, but... After that, uh, after that, it was all uphill, especially with uh, I think Apple Park season, which came after that. Uh-huh. And then um, when I was in Afghanistan, I hadn't paid attention to the show for like two or three months. I was too busy with stuff, and uh, I had like a really bad day. And I ended up going back to my room, and I thought, you know what would be really nice if I had something colorful and happy to make me smile a bit. And when I got back to my room, I realized, holy crap, I still have all these pony episodes. They're probably still pretty good. And as soon as the uh, intro came on, I just couldn't help myself and smile because it was just upbeat and happy and smiling. I had just like the crappiest day. That mm-hmm. After that, I just came like I, I was just hooked up. Wow, that's an amazing story. I heard a lot of stories and that's a really amazing one. I'm sure there are better ones out there. You just haven't heard of it. True, Mitch. Why don't you? You're the, try second, you're the second military brony we've spoken to because the first one was Black Griffin. Norman went down to Singapore to see him when he was there. Basically, now we get to hear um, what's life like on you know the military side of things. I didn't really ask GB about that, but yeah, we might ask. But we might ask that one later. So anyway, Mitch, um, could you try and beat that one? <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not going to beat it, but I'll give you my story. Please do. Um, well, it, I was stationed in Okinawa at the time, and we had two bronies in my shop, and I was a hater. I oh, wow. flung all kinds of obscene, uh, obscene gestures and statements at people. I was one of those guys. Oh. Um, and they were always like, no, just give it, a, give it a chance. Pinkie Pie is hilarious, dude. And, like, one day, he came up, he's like, dude, look at this, she goes insane. Just look at this. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what? Fine. I, there was all this, like, hubbub about it, and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'll give it a chance just to look at it for a second. And uh, he showed me um, Party of One. And I saw that, and I'm like, what the, what is this? Is she, is she on drugs? <laughs> What is going on? And then he then he replies, 
He's like, no, that's just Pinkie Pie. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is not. This is not ponies that Welcome I to the 21st grew up century. <laughs> so after that, I, I kind of like I stopped insulting people about it, but I was still kind of edgy about it. Um, and it wasn't until one of the guys in my shop who is, I'd say, quite manly, much manlier than I, actually came out and he's like, yeah, dude, Fluttershy, Fluttershy's awesome. Dude, she's, she's so adorable. She's hilarious. I'm like, what? <laughs> she's yellow and pink. You are a man. He's like, no, dude, just watch it. I was like, you know what? Threw my hands up in the air and I said, I quit. I'll watch it. I yield. <laughs> when I started off watching it, uh, the first two episodes... The first thing is when Fluttershy came up, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, who are you? She said, Fluttershy. <laughs> I saw that, and I was like, yup, you got me. I got, I, I yield. Yup, you got me. Oh, that bus. This is too much doll. And then from there, I watched just marathon after marathon of ponies rewatching episodes, and then Discord came about, and I was like, yup. This is going to be an obsession. You might as well buy about 15 shirts and plushies now, because if I don't, I'm going to buy even more later. <laughs> oh, okay, well. Um, Actually, just to clarify, have, uh, what do you mean by the word shop? Oh, oh, shop. Um, the shop, is, that's uh, our military terminology for our work room, where we work. Oh, okay, I see. Because I thought you owned, like, a comic book store or something. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, that's that's cool, jargon cool. that slipped through. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, well, it's that's fine. Right, just probably going to be a little bit. Yeah, probably just going to be a little bit of jargon throughout this whole episode. Just let us know when we start saying stuff that doesn't make any sense. Oh, we'll ask no questions problem. because they just, you know, one of my, our listeners might send us an email and hey, we want to go to Michelle's shop. <laughs> How can we find you? <laughs> send us a Google Map link or something. like that. It's in Quantico. Um, actually, I have uh, Michelle. You uh, mentioned uh, Fluttershy, and that just brings up like the first time I went to BronyCon is I was sitting in the auditorium listening to uh, John Delancey's speech there while he was wearing this big, giant brony shirt. And to my right, I I kid you not, there was this huge biker dude with this naked lady tattooed on his bicep. <laughs> he's holding he's holding and petting this little adorable uh, Fluttershy plushie. And I still have that picture I took. <laughs> you, you have the picture? So really? I need to see this picture. I, never, I, I I can't post it because I never asked. I I never asked uh, him for like permission of the picture, so I don't I don't want to put it up there without violating uh, privacy. Okay. Oh, that's cool, I, that's cool. After the show, show, show it to us. Show it to you, show it to After the show, took a show us. With him or a picture of him? Uh, took a picture of him. Okay. After the show, with him, that'd be more biker fun. dude with like this. He was just this enormous biker dude with the, this like uh, leather like vest and like. The uh, the jeans and like boots and he's wearing a bandana. And he's just <laughs> like I said, he oh, has this man. picture of like a naked woman tattooed in his bicep. Oh, little Fluttershy, he's just petting Fluttershy. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see his Harley Davidson outside. <laughs> he's probably got pink ribbons in the back, and then there'll be like haters gonna hate written on it. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, okay. He's probably gonna switch. <laughs> that guy is my hero. I want to shake yes. his hand. Maybe he'll be here at BronyCon this year. Oh, that would be awesome. I, I want a nice. picture with him. Yeah, then you'll take out that picture and have you seen this man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to the last uh, four important questions. Santa, uh, what do your family and friends yeah. think about your love for the show? The friends that I have pretty much have been just like converted into it. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, it was weird because one of them actually turned into a brony while I was away. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I never had any contact with him. Um, and he had turned into a brony, and he was telling, uh, like, my best friend uh, about it. And my best friend was all like, eh, I don't know. But, you know, maybe I, I might eventually give it a shot. He's a big Doctor Who fan and oh. a, big, a really ah. big anime. And finally... Uh, I came back and I was talking to him uh, after I'd gotten back from Afghanistan and I brought up uh, the fact of the show and that I wanted to go to BronyCon and he was like, you know, so-and-so was telling me about this show. You know, maybe you <laughs> see it. And he went ahead and he saw it and now all my friends are from. <laughs> wow. That's a cool I story. I would be like, Sato, what did you put in my drink? 
<laughs> no, no. See, he was he was way he he was way more open minded because he he watched all the uh, the Japanese animes and stuff before, so he had uh-huh. seen stuff like Sailor Moon and stuff like that. So he he understood the concept that it could be girly, but it could still be awesome. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. So, Miche, what about you? Um, well, as for friends, I've managed to convert nearly all of my friends. <laughs> oh my. So, I have maybe one or two non-brony friends. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> my family is definitely not too Impressive. open-minded about it. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, so, they make a lot of jokes about it. But it's it's all in good fun. It's not like they hate me over it. It's all just... You're a man and you watch a show for little girls. Ha ha. And I'm like, no, it's actually really good. And they're like, nah. So it's more of a teasing kind of thing. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. But I, I've tried to get them to watch the show and they're like, eh, no. That's yeah, cool, it's cool. It's not like those, you need Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely not. I've heard of people who have been that. Oh, boys. Um, that's yeah, extreme. That is, that is yeah, that's, that's an extreme. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you said all of your friends. Uh, does this involve any firearms pointing to one person's head? Uh, no. I just have the green thumb of brony conversion, I guess. Wow, all of them. Yeah, this just secrets. We need to do a special like that. <laughs> yeah, in my, in my, old, my old shop, I managed to convert all but one of the guys that I worked with into bronies. What? Don't worry, peer pressure will take care of the rest. <laughs> oh, it does. It does. You get one or two, and it just it spreads like the plague. Oh, okay. Plague yeah. of pink love and purple ponies. Wow, that's going to be awesome. Peer pressure. Peer pressure in the Marine Corps is like a real serious thing that we have to all take into account. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's new. big. So, how big is peer pressure? Uh, it's, it's um. Well, let me put, let me put it like this. Um. There are a series of insults uh, that can be thrown at you that kind of indicate how strong peer pressure can be. Um, first of all, if someone says, and you'll have to excuse my French here, if someone says you're on your own... That's not a word! ...program, OFP, that's an insult. Oh. If someone looks at you and says, oh, look, looky here, we got an individual, that would be an insult. <laughs> oh. There's, you, there's a fact the- that... If you get... Like six Marines to just stand in a line next to a door. I guarantee you, within the hour, there will be six to ten more Marines standing behind the door. So there's a critical mass theory going on. Yeah. Oh my. You just go walk out and stare into the sky for five minutes. <laughs> oh, really? You just want to be, you just want to do your own thing, right? You just want to be an individual. Uh, I got something for that, don't worry. I got something for that. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Yeah. Sansa knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, 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 just a, it's just that, you know, we have to do everything as a team, and everything has to be, like, related to the unit. And sometimes if you're taking your own individual initiative and it's not helping the unit, then it could be hurting the unit. Uh-huh. It's all that. Uh, okay. okay. So, like, if, if you don't want to watch gather... that show. Yeah, so, not like, if the, you can... the, 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 you go ahead, Bish. Uh, like, the, the way you go about the process of conversion in a unit is you get, you convert one person, kind of isolated against everyone else, and then you take you and your buddy and you find somebody else in the unit alone. So it's not two versus one, and you, and you got, you know, mm. you got the upper hand on him, he joins, and you have three. And you find two people, and you get both of them at the same time. The only so problem yeah, with no. that is like when you're probably pulling him to the corner and you're like, oh, <laughs> suddenly he shouts out, we got no FP over here! No, 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 then, <laughs> then, then, it's the other way around. <laughs> well, I started with my roommates, so... Well, that's, that's, that's an awesome well story. That's an so are awesome. you allowed to decorate your rooms on your bunkers? Um, to an extent. Okay. Um, I have my own room. And things are a lot less strict than they were in my old unit. Like, in my old unit, we couldn't have posters. We couldn't have things really blatantly on display. Everything had to be 
you know, cleared out from the center. They couldn't inhibit anything. Like there, there was a lot of rules, so I couldn't really put much on display. Uh, but in my new room, uh, I have the entire room to myself, and I have everything. Well, nearly everything I can fit on display. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, the first, just for uh, making sure the vernacular works, uh, Norman, you said uh, bunkers, but we all live in barracks. Oh, oh sorry. Bunkers. That's okay. Uh, no. And the other one... We I was actually looking for the word barracks, it just slipped my mind. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, we have a couple of people uh, that specifically decorate their things. I know we have one user, APC, who just just completely decks out his entire room with pony gear, and he's got, like, Twilight Sparkle bed sheets and everything else. Oh and he just does it mainly. That's also me. <laughs> I have Twilight Sparkle bed sheets and pillowcase <laughs> and blanket. Get on my level, <laughs> APC. <laughs> and field day must be amazing for you. Wow. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's another one. Uh, Sante, do you want to uh, explain that one? Uh, just the definition of field day. So field day is uh, for the Marine Corps uh, every Thursday, and it's basically where your command comes in and inspects your room. A, don't make sure you don't have any contraband. B, make sure you don't have any, uh, like, and things aren't dirty or out of place or mold, health, and all that stuff. So okay. that's what it feels like. Um, but it usually translates into you wiping down every square inch of every single corner, angle, surface, and underneath everything. With a toothbrush like in Hollywood? Oh. Uh, if they want to f- screw with you, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, well... We've actually been forced to do that a long time ago. Ouch. <laughs> well, when you're rookies, when you're rookies, before they break you, I can. I had that feeling, I have that feeling. Did you go for yeah. national service, Norman? No, I was lucky not to. All right. Once again, thanks guys for answering those four important questions. And I think we can move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. Dan? Nothing, Dan? Uh, there was something, but it's no longer valid. So, yeah. Okay, 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 Dan. So, anyway, um, I have one and it's kind of random. So, anyway, um, I recently bought the Elements of Harmony book. Um, you know, the one from Grey, Grey Brown? Um, what? What's the company, Dan? I don't know. Oh, that book where basically it's the encyclopedia for... Yes, I know what it looks like. I don't memorize publishers because I just read books. I don't analyze them. Yeah, but anyway, I have that book and I have a copy to give out. So how do you get this book? Well, basically you need to answer four important questions that I will give throughout the week. And I'll start this next month. On give by the time you publish this episode, it will be next month. Yeah, not really, because <laughs> uh, well, don't mess around with my <laughs> don't mess around with my dates. I I know what I'm doing. I, anyway, um, did you say in July? <clears throat> yes, in July. Out. I was just looking at the calendar. So anyway, for your information, guys, semantics have caused a lot of damage to this show. <laughs> Indeed. So <laughs> anyway, um, next month, July, I ask four questions, one question a week. And you have to listen to the show to get all those questions and send your answers to the MBS show at gmail.com. And well, basically, we'll just pick out who's the first to get all the questions right and you'll win the book. Open to everyone around the world. Listen out for the questions that will start next week and you might win the book. And on to the next topic. And in the next topic is news time. And in today's news time... Hasbro CND 3D Ponies. In unfortunate news, Hasbro recently sent out a cease and desist letter to Shapeways, a 3D printing community, asking them to stop the production of ponies by one of their artists going by the name of Hashbrony. If you were one of those people who thought they could have tried and get a pony at the very last minute, you were wrong. I learned that the hard way. Though the people at Shapeways have stopped all productions and... For the people who have paid for their ponies, they will be refunded or given a store credit. Link to the artist page could be found in the show notes. Uh, so, I, I think I have to go first because I tried to bought one, almost went there. They say they were in production and they have to cancel it. I'm sad. 
The day will come when one of us will get a 3D printer or find somebody within our extended circle of friends who has one and we'll be like, uh, you know, can we borrow that? <laughs> what for? Architectural work. Indeed. But anyway, um, Why Dan, do you want pink material? Um, don't know. But Dan, what do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm really mixed up on this. It's because I thought 3D printing would be like the liberation for people who wanted to print their own ponies and I know they were printing canon ponies but this is probably the gateway for OCs so perhaps if they get their chance to revive like how fighting his magic is back on their feet right now to go with OCs they you know might find their market again technically fighting his magic is not using ponies but they're using other four-legged animals they are I mean in the terms of OCs region maybe you know if if someone wants to print a Draconicus lamp which looks pretty badass like the one that was happening in uh, Keep Calm and Flutter On I would buy that and that is actually something that you if you have a 3D printer and you're listening to we're interested drop me a line at daniel at the mbsshow.com we need to talk wow name dropping then so guys I'll go with Santa what do you think? see with with Hasbro and what, uh, what they're doing um uh, with all these cease and desist letters, the whole purpose behind what they uh, what they are doing and why they're only like trying to like halfway enforce is they know that a lot of the the attention they get and a lot of the money that they can get through royalties and stuff is going through some of this kind of back these backdoor channels between fans and stuff. But if they do not defend their copyright by doing uh, things like these cease and desist letters, then according to I'm not an attorney, but from what I understand, according to uh, the tax law, or I should say the uh, copyright law, that they would actually lose their copyright and then literally anybody could pick it up. And so that, that, that's what they definitely want to avoid. That's what most corporations definitely try to avoid. So it's, it's, it's just one of these things that's going it, to – it's going to be something we got to deal with. And, yep. That's true. just how it is. Yep. It's true. Like I, I think that we're um, – fortunate enough to be as free as we are with all the artwork that's going around, all the conventions. Um, I mean, look at things like um, My Little Investigated, uh, My Little Investigations. That is still going strong. The Ace so Attorney, I think, Yes. Um, so I think what they're doing is to prevent them losing their IP, they're, they're targeting as little as possible but they're targeting the high-vis things to have the most impact for the least amount of restriction. So I think what they're doing, while I don't think any brony likes it, what they're doing is the, I think it's the best route. True. And I, the thing is, with um, Shapeways and this 3D pony, it's not that we don't have an avenue to buy it. We do. It's called Funko. They have their... Um, huge, well, six-inch ponies. So, that's an alternative. It's kind of different because 3D printing prints with PLA and ABS and Funko is printed using vinyl. They're different in terms of how they look. True, you but... Know, and all these kind of dimensions and very specific things. But if then, you want to put them on display, then definitely the Funko ones look better, but they come at a much bigger price. Not really. Um, the 3D printing ponies are at 30 plus dollars. That's I mean, if you, own, if you own a 3D printer, you can get one for probably about $5. Not really, because the way that this uh, happens is the artist just prints through the community page, Shapeways. He sells it there and gains money. Um, you guys should go to Shapeways. I mean, they Shapeways do... is only one place. If you go to Thingiverse or you go to <laughs> Instructable, uh, Instructables, if I'm not mistaken, they have lots and lots of pony templates you can download. So it's basically something that he's just offering a service of being able to print the ponies. It's another file that you just load into SketchUp and press Control p on your computer and you just get a pony of your own. So pretty much it's not really that big of a loss. Yeah, but still. Um, the thing is, right now, like I said, Hasbro's doing this because this guy's making money out of it. So if- I actually beg to differ because um, I think it's because someone's just telling them about it. That- it's just basically the <laughs> fact that Somebody told Hasbro, this guy's doing it. And if they don't do anything, they could lose their copyright on those grounds. True that. But nah, there's still a lot of things behind the, behind this. Like, we don't really know. It's all speculation right now. But 
Hasbro is just doing their job and Shapeway is just listening to Hasbro because they don't want to get into trouble. That's about it. I want to start like a revolution to appeal this copyright law. You and millions like you. So anyway, well, the, sorry? The, uh, the issue with uh, the US copyright law, like if, um, if you were to try and uh, get it like totally repealed, you could then see stuff like Disney making their own stuff. You could see uh, other people basically making a lot of money off of basically what Lauren Faust and Hasbro and the writers teams put together. And things would just kind of like be all over the place. It's it's the idea is that it's supposed to protect the creator of whatever they try to design and they will be able to get money out. I mean, perhaps maybe an amendment to it because currently with the whole deal of um, things that the whole the whole deal of saying if somebody even touches it, they could you could lose the main thing. Like fighting is magic is something Hasbro will not do in a million years. So that's the kind of thing that we want to see. And well, I believe uh, that they were sorry. Go ahead. The uh, the thing is, it's not just fighting is magic that would make them lo- lose their IP. It's not just my little investigation. It's not just you know, letting us do all of our own work, uh, art, not just letting us do our own animations, you know, voiceovers and all this. It's everything put together. When you have somebody making their own an- episodes, they're literally their own fan-made episodes of the show. You have this guy selling 3D print models of it. You have this guy that's making plushies. You have this guy that's making hats. This guy that's doing, you know, Everything combined, it, it kind of overthrows it, and eventually they could lose it if they don't take some action to show that they're trying to <coughs> defend their IP. Okay. Like, say, for example, um, if Disney or Pixar decide to make a My Little Pony movie with uh, some of the original characters or maybe just background characters or whatever they want to do, uh, and Hasbro has to take them to court to get them to stop, they're going to be in front of a judge, and the judge is going to have to ask them, were you defending your copyright? You're saying that Disney and Pixar can't make this, but all of these other incidences you're letting go. What is your justification for defending your copyright against some people and not others? And if they don't have a legal leg to stand on, then other people start making money off of it. Uh, it would be – we could even pull it to, let's say, Hasbro never even got involved in uh, Lauren Faust only did this by herself and she animated it by herself and she started putting this stuff out. Well, if somebody else decides to do a better job or if Hasbro decides to pick it up from her and then they make their own episodes without ever giving any credit to her, without this, without a copyright protection for the original creator, then it's just, it's just your SOL for, uh, uh, Lauren Faust then. So it's, it's all about trying to figure out how to protect the creator. And mm. th- there are arguments of, like, where is this limit? Because at some point, it does stop, and it enters uh, the public domain. And when it enters the public domain, that means, okay, well, all your copyright stuff is kind of out, out the door. And yeah. I, I think this applies to, like, Aspirin and uh, Aspirin a couple Aspirin has other, a copyright? Like a patent or something? Has, uh, Okay. Everything is a copyright. Uh, Aspirin was originally, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, don't quote me on this, but if I remember correctly, Aspirin was originally a product, and that was a brand name. And at some point, uh, that became so commonplace within the public domain that people just were using it as a vernacular term, and they said, all right, well... You might be call it. You don't. You don't have the right to secure it because it's in the public domain. Everyone already says aspirin. It's already out there. You can't really file your claim. So the people who I, I believe Bear was actually the first people who invented aspirin. Now they have to call it Bear aspirin rather than just aspirin because that's a public domain term and they can't copyright. Ah, so, same like Kleenex. It's, somebody- it's all still acetaminophen, I think. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, the, that's the chemical term for it. Yeah, right. That, that's the that's the molecular chemical name of the drug that they're specifically using. I think. I think I'm not a doctor. Today. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a court. I'm not a judge. I don't know <laughs> that, all this that's, stuff. But this is what you're I'm all doing. of the above as far as we're that's concerned. The active, <laughs> that's the active ingredient in it. Yes, that ah, that is yeah. true. I do know that for a fact. <clears throat> 
Okay, that's cool. Well, um, on to a bright the note. Dan, why don't you take this next one? All right. And now, speaking of copyright, well, never mind. Let's just go straight to it. Deadpool comic is featuring ponies on the cover. And if you don't know who Deadpool is, he's going to punch a hole through the fourth wall and strangle you. Here's a quick introduction. He's a character from Marvel Comics, and he's a mercenary for hire. And he has the healing factor like Wolverine, he's good with guns, and once again, he has the power to break the fourth wall. Literally, Marvel's Pinkie Pie. So, with that out of the way, at the up-and-coming San Diego Comic Con, people will have the chance to get a variant of the first cover of Deadpool Kills Deadpool. Very fourth wall. Which features pony versions of the Marvel characters. Now, only 1,500 issues will be printed and will cost you $10 each. So if you're going for San Diego Comic Con, you know where to start lining up. So links can be found in the show notes for the San Diego Comic Con 2013 Deadpool Kills Deadpool number 1 Ponies variant. So guys, what do you think of Deadpool breaking the fourth wall in an extreme way right now? Norman, why don't you, why don't you go ahead? Couldn't have come at a better time. His game just came out. Um, Everybody is like iffy on it. And then this comic comes out. Oh my, I'm so hyped. I know that uh, his game just came out. I'm trying to I'm trying to steal it from my friend so I can actually give a review to everybody for it. But uh, I've heard that Pinkie Pie is actually in the game. So really? I have to look no. no. I, I Easter think, egg? No. I, I think so. I don't. I don't know for sure. I've heard that she is, but I, I do not know. I, I'll have I'm to check. I'm googling this <laughs> <laughs> this right is now. Be the best thing since Borderlands Two. But, but I mean, yeah, a lot of the fans between both Deadpool and Pinkie Pie have compared them to each other, and they do have a nasty habit of breaking the fourth wall like crazy. Uh, so th- they've got a bunch of fans. I know that the uh, Traveling Brony Museum actually has a plushy Deadpool pony doll that they have on display. That's pretty ah. cool. Um, the, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, very, they're rather similar characters, except uh, Deadpool is a lot more violent and has firearms. <laughs> Although Pinkie Pie does have a cannon. Is Deadpool actually... I'm, I'm not sure about this, I don't follow Marvel Comics, but is Deadpool a hero or a villain? Or is he, like, number 47 from Hitman? He's an anti-hero. Uh, Anti-sorry? Yeah. Anti-hero. He's kind of a bad guy, but everybody likes him kind of deal. So he's like Discord. Yeah, more or less. But he takes he's orders more... from somewhere. He he works for his. Oh, I don't know. Deadpool is an interesting character. Santa, I think you're more knowledgeable on this. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, from from what I've understood, uh, Deadpool is. Uh, I, I forget. I forget if they said he's schizophrenic or psychopathic. I don't remember. But they said he's not mentally oh. balanced. Yeah, okay, so. So he, so he ends up not really, he's, he usually ends up being a good guy more often than not, whether it's for bad reasons or good reasons. <laughs> but it's, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's pretty much just like a loose cannon, but most of the time they have him as a good guy. Sounds like someone who will ditch the contract for the greater good. No, not really. The greater good is himself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's a capitalist. Um, <laughs> I don't know where you come out with these jokes, but they're amazing. <laughs> Why, thank you. So, what about um, you, Rich? Have just you just Googled it. There, Pinkie Pie is not in the game. Oh. It's, all the links come back to comics. Comics. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. There might be an Easter egg that's not found yet. You'll never know. However, there is a rarity in the uh, DLC too. for Borderlands 2. They got to look right. They got to and look right. Borderlands 2 had that macromancer with so many yes, very the mechanical skills. The mechano, uh, the mechanical me- the mechanomancer. Why am I thinking about Warcraft? With uh, <laughs> the skill Discord. Twenty um, percent cooler. Think, yes, twenty percent cooler. Uh, the guy's uh, name Fluttershy in the credits. <laughs> oh yes, I. When I played Borderlands 2, I picked that class and played it. That's the only class I will ever play on Borderlands 2. It's a Mechanomancer, <laughs> because ponies. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Michelle, what do you think about this uh, Comic-Con uh, variant cover? I think it's awesome. I think they, they should go further with it. 
Pinkie mm. Pie and Deadpool. I mean, oh, De- I can imagine like maybe 30, 40 episodes down the road from now, we'll be saying, and now the Deadpool kills Deadpool alternative cover <laughs> now retails for seven thousand US dollars. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I hope they do come up with something because uh, ponies are hot right now, and the comic, the the pony comic, they're one of the best selling comics ever. I think IDW seems happy about it. Of course they are. Indeed, didn't, indeed. Didn't, wasn't it Dark Horse that produced uh, pony comic? No, it's IDW. Oh, it's IDW. Oh, okay. I should know because I buy books from them <laughs> online. I no, am we can't get the physical comic here. We have to, he has to go to Singapore. I'm not bothered with going to Singapore. No, I don't bother. So I just buy the book via uh, Comixology. You wait till you need to get the Xbox service. Then you'll go. No, no, no. I'm not going to get the Xbox. I'm going to no, get the Xbox. get your current 360 service. Nope, not going to do it either. I just have my PS4. <laughs> PS3. Oh, hello. <laughs> I come over the future. <laughs> We can have a long conversation about that one. Oh, we will see, we'll oh, see. The PS4 That's just came out, and Malaysia gets everything at least a month late, and you have a PS4. I'm from the future. No, but anyway, um, I'm guessing everybody here likes the comic book. And if you do go to Comic Con, do send us a copy. I'll say a lot of thank yous. If not me, you could always give to these two guys. Um, Santa okay, and Michelle. You. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in guest time, we have bronies from FOB. Military bronies who are in service or who are veterans. Still military. So hello, Santa. Hello, Miss Shay. How are you guys doing? Having fun? Yes. Always. No, I'm having a terrible time. This place sucks. Oh. <laughs> well. And now we just... decided to cut full talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge Where's my muffins? <laughs> I was promised muffins when I came on this show. They're, oh, they're s- muffins are cakes, so yeah. No, they're they're sent by Derpy, so um um yeah. Oh damn it. <laughs> so anyway it's probably somewhere in Germany by now. <laughs> oh probably in their belly. But anyway, guys, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are or what you do? Santa, you go first. Yeah, I'm I am Saunterhoof. I am the uh, friendly neighborhood moderator for the uh, Skype chat for Bob Equestria and the forums, and I also kind of try and control the uh, uh, Bob Equestria DeviantArt page. And I am also the mail clerk for the YouTube page lost. as well, right? Uh, that's um, awesome. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that, that's pretty much my uh, role in the uh, uh, in the Bob. Uh, oh. I am a. Uh, I'm in the IRR for the United States Marine Corps. Uh, I think my contract expires in October, but uh, I've had uh, two deployments uh, on active duty. I've gone to Iraq and I've gone to Afghanistan. Uh, only one of them was listed as a combat deployment, so there was that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, not, I, I think you can't talk about that, right? No, I can talk about it. I mean the. The war in Iraq pretty much ended by now, but I, I don't really have too many secret info. I don't have secret information about the stuff I did in Iraq. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe we'll ask that in the in the interview section. So, Michelle, what about you? Um, okay. Hello, everyone. I am Michelle. I am the staff artist as well as the head of the content division. Um, I run the Facebook page with my awesome. Lieutenants Silvermane and uh, Vapor, they do a wonderful job. And I also run the YouTube page oh. as well. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. I mean, and okay. what do you do in the military? I am a data network specialist. Um, I work in IT with computers all the time. Um, I am currently stationed in Quantico, Virginia, um, but I'm not really supposed to talk about what I do. Specifically, oh, okay. you so fix you computers. Uh, I am originally from New York. Oh, oh, wow! Yes, always wanted to go to New York. Yes, one day, one day. Well, I don't really want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fix computers, and it's all right, but it's just a little bit too busy for me. I'm kind of more of a country type of guy. Oh, so okay, cool. nice. like beginning to crack up again. Yes. Never mind, never mind. We'll, we'll just try and move on. So, Santa, where are you from? 
Uh, I'm actually from the most interesting state, Ohio. <laughs> I say that because I'm not sure what to make of it yet. There's a potato, <laughs> right? Lived here for several. I've lived here for several decades, and I'm still not sure what to make of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the key word in the sentence is yet, so one day you're gonna find it. <laughs> well, I know where it is. It's around me. I, heard, I mean, find what's special hey. about it. <laughs> I what's heard Ohio is um, full of potatoes, right? Uh, no. No. Um, Ohio is. I guess Ohio would be special for uh, Idaho is potatoes. Oh. Yeah, Idaho is where we talk. get the potatoes in our Happy Meals. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, Ohio is mainly known for corn and soy uh, agricultural products. Besides that, uh, it's trying to really do a push into uh, natural gas extraction with uh, fracking procedures. It's I. It's known for um, the Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh. Um, okay, uh, the uh, Canton uh, Football Hall of Fame, uh, the Dayton Air Force Base. Uh, I think it had a few Nike missile uh, anti missile sites uh, back in the seventies uh, and eighties and sixties. Uh, but other than that, it's also mainly known for its its politics, which seems to be rather representative of the uh, nation as a whole. It's I think the state of Ohio has uh, gone in line with the presidential victor. Um, I think for the past like thirty or forty or fifty years, something like that. Uh, it's it's just got the demographics that just seem to match up with the rest of the country, oh. uh, just in general politics. Well, so, funny. That, that's pretty sorry. That's pretty much all that Ohio is known for, besides its uh, rather, rather odd-shaped flag. It's a uh, double pennant flag. Oh. oh, yeah, the double pennant. F- funny that you talk about politics, because on Brony Time today, we talk about politics, and I got no idea what to say. Uh, anyway. Well, I can't answer too much Malaysian politics. So, no, I mean, no. that's, you that's, don't that's want to. Fine. Let's just put it that way. No, technically it was American to. politics, left side or right side, and how Bronies are liberal or not. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm since oh, I got no, no idea. I can put Malaysian politics into one sentence. We're a third world country with first world problems. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, yes. Dan, why don't you take over this interview? All right, then. So, uh, first of all, let's just go a little bit um, backwards into what we were doing earlier. So, both of you, did you all become Bernies before or after joining the military? Uh, Santa, uh, why did you after. start? Both after? Uh, well, yes. um, both of us enlisted before uh, Bronies or Generation 4 Ponies even existed. True. Ah, okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, um, actually, just to start off with, um, let's talk a bit about FOB Equestria. So, how did you two meet? Um, uh, well, actually, we've never met in person, per se. Well, we probably met, but never actually formally acknowledged each other. <laughs> um, no, FOB Equestria... Yeah. The idea of Fab Equestria uh, came about during the Military Brony Luncheon that the uh, Brony Doc held uh, at BronyCon 2012. Wait, and, was that uh, recent? I thought you all been y- around for yeah. like forever. No, no. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, for one year. <laughs> oh. oh, not even, not even, almost. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like it. established 2011 or something. Yeah. Nope. I mean, I did hear about military bronies back then. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they were I mean, very rare. Okay. Um, early, mid-August is of 2012 is when we we were conceived. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but yeah, during the um, the luncheon, I had uh, a guy walk up to me, who now I know as uh, Josh, say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting a uh, group for military bronies, I didn't realize there were so many of us. Would you be interested in um, joining? And I was like, absolutely. How can I help out? Uh, and he's like, well, we need somebody to draw us some stuff. And I was like, I can draw. <laughs> <laughs> and everything after that is history. As as in regards of my perspective, I think Saunter, you might have joined a little bit later. I think. No, I pretty or, much that was Spangle. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Spangle that we brought on later on. Um, I was I was at the same. Yeah, the, so 
I should elaborate. The uh, Brony, uh, BronyCon documentary crew decided that they wanted to hold a luncheon for military service members in uh, BronyCon uh, in 2012. And um, they put that out on uh, Equestria Daily, and they said that they wanted to reserve uh, 20 seats for all the military members that would show up. Well, it or twenty, it was our twenty or forty seats. Well, it turned out sixty of us showed up. Whoa! And we didn't even. I'll, I'll be honest. When I saw that, I didn't believe that there was more than a dozen uh, military drones. I, I, I honestly yep. didn't think we would even fill it up. And then when we got there, here was like here was like this small platoon sized element of military brody <laughs> just standing like where the hell did we all come from? <laughs> yeah. like, did you actually none see some of familiar faces come. there? Like probably from your own platoon that was probably in the closet? No, no, uh, no, no. See, none of us none of us were actually there. This is this is the interesting thing about uh, military bronies is we are like this niche of a niche. <laughs> so uh, you know, I'm serious, though. So uh, the United States uh, Armed Forces, in and of itself, so it, it doesn't it doesn't draft and it doesn't do conscription. So it's approximately one percent of the population. Of Whoa. that, less, uh, less than it, that. It's like point yeah, it, one. No, no, it's more. It's more than that. You're thinking of the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is only two hundred. Was is only like two hundred thousand. But the, the Whoa, army has on. like one point. The army has like one point. Six million people both we have, active. And we have like three hundred and thirty million people. If the entire military would have to be about three point three million, which it isn't, it, it's like point something. Yeah, so well, okay, less than one percent. We'll go with that. Yeah, we, we can go with less than one percent of the general population. But uh, this and was then, to include. This was to include um, all military bronies, regardless of country. So, did any military bronies from outside of the U.S. turn up? Norway. It was very rare. It was it was just uh, it was just King Harold or Major Tom from Norway, who is also now our boss. He showed up there. Uh, he was he was one of the only uh, non U.S. military bronies that showed up. Uh, ah. I think there might have been somebody from the U.K. and maybe an yeah, Australian. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It was pretty small. An Australian. But, I mean, at the same time, you, you get, you're talking about a, yeah, you're talking about like a two thousand dollar plane ticket to get or in yes. two thousand. US well, dollars to get there. 20, I, for us to get there. I was stationed in Okinawa at the time, so yes, I spent about two thousand dollars to make it to Bronica. Wow, I, I, I wish I was early back in the game to do that. It's no. about it's well, pretty much the same for us. We would have to pay about two thousand, and we need a bloody had, as well. I yeah. saved up for months to make it there, <laughs> and I'm so yeah. happy I did. Greatest True. day of my life. Guys, um, he, she's a, just a random question. Did you guys get to meet Tara Strong? Yes. Yes. She uh, showed up. Uh, she uh, went around uh, slapping our wrists with this uh, some sort bracelet. of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Those yes. Um, and Lauren Faust was there, and the BronyCon uh, documentary uh, staff was John there, and Tom Lance was there. Wow, you guys are and really they, lucky. They, they tried walking around and talking to us, and... Just, <laughs> just turned... Turned into a giant autograph session. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, one, the, at one point, didn't everybody start singing at one point? Oh, yeah. I, I remember I everybody was so. singing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we sang uh, Twilight Licious for Tower Strong. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. It, it was in the documentary. So Black Griffin was yep. there as well? Yeah. Mm, don't think so. Um, um, I don't, I don't think he, oh, yeah, he hasn't been to a con yet. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Black Griffin's uh, interesting because, uh, well, first of all, he's freaking amazing as a musician and a singer. But on top of the fact that uh, he's, he's in also the US an artist, league, True yeah, indeed. he's also an artist. I just call him the Jack of No Trades, master of all. <laughs> <laughs> he um he he was spending most of his time on board ship because he was in the navy, so he couldn't really get out and go to any places as much. It just wasn't going to be an option. True. true. So um, he came uh, here. No, but, but there was on. Came here to, to the, Kuala Lumpur. There was on service then. Yeah, it was on service, and then he he was on service, but he still got a chance to come out. And you know, he came out and met with the bronies, and it was really really memorable. I mean, given that the first foreign brony that I ever met came from the navy, that was awesome. And he was black ribbon, so that just makes it sweet. Exactly. Why, yeah. do, we have, why do we have a picture of him like petting a tiger? I, I, He's crazy, and that's in that's in KL. That's in Malaysia, isn't it? Yeah, that was in Malaysia. Yeah, 
<laughs> Black Griffin just said Jack of no trades, master of all. He probably can talk to tigers. <laughs> <laughs> probably can. Probably speaks tiger. He just roars him. Um, wow. no, knowing him, that might be true. It's like Manticore speaks. Probably speaks Murloc too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh boys. So, um, besides, so when you, so you guys went to BronyCon, and how was the scene at BronyCon? I was trying to, yeah, it it was, I I was trying to play a low profile, and I wasn't sure what to expect, it was the first time I'd ever gone to a con, it was certainly the first time I'd ever been to New Jersey, (laughs) and then, like, near thousands of bronies, I just walked in there, and I was just overwhelmed with how much pony there was, there was just pony, and colors and rainbows and just everything everywhere. It was like someone threw like a pastel uh, conglomeration of ink buckets at the wall and there was this pony. <laughs> wow. I was like all struck. Well, it sounds I, I actually fun. came there only for like the second day and then like the latter half of the second day. So I was actually there for like only the worst parts of Bronycon. It was still awesome. Did, did you uh, experience the fire? No. Uh, uh, I was only there for I the did. very end of the second day. That was on the first day. Oh, okay. So did how... you have to rush off or something or what? No. Um, I was actually hanging out with some of my uh, uh, friends who I who I deployed with, and I wanted to go uh, see them before I went to Bronycon. Ah, and okay. And I, I just wanted to spend... I was kind of concerned that, you know, I wouldn't like going to BronyCon, so I spent the first day with my friends, hanging out with them, and, you know, we went to a water park and I got to see New Jersey, and I, I couldn't believe it, but apparently New Jersey is actually pretty beautiful. I know it's, like, crazy. They have mountains in New Jersey. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> we went to a water park in New Jersey, and the water was clear. I was just shocked everywhere I went. <laughs> and New Jersey had great, great lasagna. Oh. So, it's got a very a very large Italian community, so they, they cook a lot of their um, ethnic food. My bucket I list is why. longer. <laughs> I wonder why. So, Mitchell, you said something about experiencing the fire? Um, yes, I was actually at BronyCon the entire time, all of the first day, and the kind of, maybe a little bit of pre-con festivities, per se. Um... But yes, for the uh, after the fire, I actually I had been speaking with Dusty Cat, uh, and then it went off, and we started, um, I guess, hurting people out per se. Um, yeah. And we went out, and I actually got to talk to him for like the entire duration. And he's a really cool guy. Wow. Um, I, oh yes. I heard a lot of good things about him, but. Yeah, when you have an online personality... You, you didn't hear a lot of good things about him, you heard it straight from him. Yeah, I know, but no, it's like sometimes when you have an online personality, it's kind of different from real life. No, but I believe he's actually more of a very sincere person. I mean, not to look down on his age or anything, but people back then didn't really have that kind of differentiation we have right now with online and real life personality. Mm. He's a very open-minded and very, you know, straightforward guy. And I still call him like, the fandom's master Yoda, he's like, he gives the best advice and the wisest things I've ever heard that ever came out of this fandom. I mean, he's a fan celebrity for a reason. If you really want to go as far to say that, but I would. Because yeah, everyone I would, knows I would agree with you. Yeah, I would agree with you. Awesome. So anyway, I, 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 here's, I, I think we went off topic for a bit, but... I would like to know more about FOB Equestria. Could, could you guys explain what is it? How, how does it? how is it run? So, FOB Equestria uh, is a website for military bronies. It's uh, it's kind of like multi-purpose. Right now, it's for basically having a place for military bronies to gather and talk. That's part of the forums. Uh, we can connect with military bronies, kind of like advertise what they're doing, whether it be somebody like Derby Drift, who is... Uh, who is uh, racing with a derby car, or whether it be uh, stuff that uh, Black Griffin is making, or First Awesome Platoon's making a comic, or any of these, any of this stuff that's happening within the community itself, we want to try and advertise and advocate for it. Mm. Um, we have our own YouTube. We also do uh, news. We do art posts. It's just a place where everybody can kind of gather and talk and share being military bronies and all that jazz. Oh, so uh, basically it's kind of uh, EQD for military bronies? Yeah, uh, sort of. In, in a way. 
Oh. We're not trying to like compete with EQD because again, we're just trying to go just with our niche. So I mean, we we don't have the we don't have the ability to really copy everything that uh, EQD does, but we also expand upon that same stuff because we have a we have a Deviant Art page, we have a Facebook, we have a YouTube channel. We we try to be more active in actually producing content rather than just finding content. Oh, okay. Yes, um, for example, our um, React videos. We do military ah, yes. and React. Um, so kind of things like that. And I, I actually have um, a project I'm working on for Five Quest Share, but I'm not announcing it yet. Okay, okay. Do keep us posted, though. We would love to hear about it. I, I have a project as well. <laughs> uh, you will see it. You will see it at the uh, 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 military brony panel in... Uh, BronyCon. We all, well, that's one of the things we do is that we all have our own individual projects that we're trying to add content for and share with everybody. We like uh, we had a user create a guide on. So now we have like a, a, a little guide on that we can run with and we're getting streamers for all of the uh, uh, conventions that it attends. We're just shipping it all over the all over the country so that military bronies can carry it around and you know they have that they have a they now have a guide on that they can uh, whip around and have. Ah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So, um, FOB, just a um, kind of enrollment, would I say, or membership. Uh, how many Brony are there from, you know, around the world, outside of the States especially? Uh, I, yeah, I, I do have an idea. I wrote it down. Um, I, I actually have it posted in the forum under the uh, military under a topic of military service in the military section. Um, we have a brony. Uh, I can just start naming off the list. We have brony from Singapore. We have two or three bronies from the UK and Scotland. Well, I should say UK. Scotland is within that. Uh, we don't have any from Ireland. We do have one from Austria. We have two or three from Germany. Uh, we have two from Germany within the Bundeswehr. One who was an American stationed in Germany. We had we, I think we have one or two from uh, Okinawa. We have, uh, but they're again stationed in Okinawa. We have, let's see, I Black Griffin's one of them, I guess. Um, Black Griffin is at sea, so <laughs> he's wherever he decides to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, not entirely foreign. I would, uh, our biggest, uh, outside of the United States, uh, military members would be the Canadians. I'm pretty sure we have like, uh, I think we have like 10 total or 12 totals that have identified themselves, but only like four or five, which are actually active. Oh, um, all right. For total personnel, I know we're just over a hundred enlisted registered users. We only have uh, only a handful of officers. Um, we have about ten to fifteen civilians. We have probably about uh, around ten or fifteen. Uh, we have probably about fifteen marines. Uh, officers, we have you mean as in policemen? Uh, uh, no. no. Um, Military officers. military officers. Okay. We have probably, uh, I think, about 50 or 60 uh, U.S. Army uh, soldiers. We have probably another 20 or 30 Air Force and Navy. And I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, right. We have one guy. Uh, we have uh, King Harold from Norway. I think we have another guy from Sweden. Somewhere. You know, I'm impressed that most of you are from the States, but King Harold's the boss. <laughs> well, he's yeah, not actually uh, the boss. Oh, he's Josh is the, the boss. He's, oh, he's the second the in boss. command. Oh, okay. yes. Yes. And then myself, Saunter, uh, Spangle are the assistants. All right. So we're like the uh, we're like the second tier, and then we have our third tier, which is like GTR, Blackhawk, Silvermane, Tweak, uh, Vapor Blaze, Red Sage, Dizzy V. And I'm probably missing somebody else. If you, um, um, if you check on our website, on our homepage, we actually have a, a little diagram um, showing how the um, rank structure is laid out. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. So, Josh uh, Scorcher is yeah. on top. And he's, uh, Josh Scorcher is the guy who's on top. 
He Firebrand. is also goes by Commander Firebrand. He's he's the guy who kind of organized it, so we just kind of left him on top. Uh, he also has his own YouTube channel, and I Jesus, I think he has like fifty thousand subscribers or something. Whoa! Like that. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, content division. So, okay, so um, actually, I I think this is probably another jargon question, but. What's with the title FOB Equestria, or the name? Oh, um, FOB, um, it's actually pronounced uh, FOB. In the military, we don't say FOB, we just say FOB. Um, okay. So FOB Equestria, uh, it stands for Forward Operating Base. Ooh. Um, wow. Yes, it's basically a, a base in a, in a deployed environment. Santa wants to yeah. elaborate further on that. So it's like a pocket base or something like that? Uh, something like that, so, in forward, uh, in forward deployed areas, you're going to have, uh, at your highest level, you're going to have camps. That's like, um, that, that's, it's going to be a massive base with thousands of people on it. It's going to have like an airfield and all sorts of stuff. It, it, it's going to be kind of like a base in the United States. And that's going to be, for example, Camp Lebanon. Um, we, the next level down, are FOBs. Those are forward operating bases. Those are smaller. Those may have a small airfield or just like a helipad and uh, probably not over a thousand people max, but they can go down as small as like maybe a hundred. Something like a uh, something like a uh, I would say like a regiment sized element maybe or a uh, or a platoon size or a company sized element would fit in there. And then at your bottom rung, you got your cops, which are your combat, uh, where they com- combat operating posts. I think is what the yes. army calls them. Yeah, yes. um, those are those are those are your minuscule ones. Those are like only platoon sized at max. They only have a couple buildings. Sometimes they might only have like thirty people in them. They're like tiny little fire bases with like mortar pits and barbed wire. And that, that's kind of your uh, structure for uh, forward deployed bases. Ah, okay. That's interesting. So actually, why the forward operating base and not a camp equestria or corp equestria? Because uh, forward operating base sounds so much better than <laughs> camp equestria. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Most of the time, it, at the time, camp, camp equestria it sounds like it's like a Boy Scout camp or something. <laughs> you don't really want it. It's like a summer camp. Camp equestria is... Uh, most of us... Most of the time, right. most of most most of the time, you never really hear of cops in the military because they're so tiny. Mm. Um, un, until like a major battle occurs next to them, but the rest of the time, you usually hear uh, the term "fob" come up, like uh, "fob Salerno" or "fob." I, I have no idea. There's there's a lot of them, but that "fob Salerno" is the most famous one. I know. Hey, uh, here's a not random question. Um, did any of you guys went to? Las Pegasus Unicorn? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, and if I remember right, somebody said that um, they enlisted military bronies to be on guard duty? Or, like, to become circuitry guards? Um, well, that's not... I think that's a little bit of a, a stretch. I know um, when uh, Las Pegasus went up in flames, they, they needed a lot of help. Um, and when we had got there, we had offered them help, and they said, yeah, you know, we're probably going to need it. We're really shorthanded. Um, so what they did is they had asked um, us uh, if we could stand posts for whatever amount of time, um, and I stood it for a few hours, got changed off, and then everything literally just went up in flames, and they said, hey, we really, really could use you now. So they had... Uh, myself and Silvermane on guard for several hours. I know Silvermane was on for like seven hours or so uh, wow. on the second day. And I, I went up to the um, security manager and I was like, hey, he's been here for like seven hours. Can you please, please get someone to replace him? And he's like, oh, oh man, I apologize. God, that's got to um, be the first time. That's got to be the first time an E8 has stood posted. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> but he's like, uh, but Superman, Silvermane, he's he's such a, a humble, kind individual that he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't even care. I've just been standing here. 
Uh, I'm like, didn't you ask somebody to relieve you? He's like, nah, I'm just, just kind of standing here. <laughs> I'm like, why? For ponies. <laughs> someone to relieve you. For ponies, it doesn't matter. For Celestia. <laughs> and me being his technical fob equestria supervisor, per se, I went over and got him relieved because that is, I did not want him, he, he paid money to be there. He shouldn't. <laughs> Be standing guard the entire time. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, when, when things went up in flames, we, we definitely tried to help out, and I, I think we did a, a good job uh, with it. And the the staff were very kind. I mean, they were friendly. They didn't give any orders. They asked us, and we were just happy to help. Good work, guys, because um, I, I, I can't remember who I heard that news from, but that sounds awesome. You know, the, the, there is one thing about this this organization that is just absolutely perplexing to me is that on the very top level of our command structure, we have the lowest ranking members, and at the very bottom, we have the highest ranking. <laughs> 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 we we have a we have a lance corporal who's in who's in the band at, as the as the senior most officer, followed by a civilian contractor, and then we have the NCOs. Uh, at the second tier level of command, and we have, uh, you know, drill sergeant tweak and <laughs> staff NCOs. <NCOs. laughs> yeah, senior ma- was it master senior senior master airman or something? Or is something, uh, something like is, that? He's an E eight. He's almost as high as it gets. Yeah, he's, oh. <laughs> it's like general. He's, he's sitting at the bottom of the. He's sitting at the bottom. He's sitting at the bottom of the uh, of our command structure, and he's way, way, way higher than the rest of us. He, he's <laughs> been in the Air Force. He's been in the Air Force how uh, how long? Well, the Army, then the Air Since Force. Like I think 19, it was, he's like, like he's thirty been in the years, nineteen seventy three or something like that. He's been in, he's been in for like thirty five years. He's been in the military. <laughs> well, uh, I think he's been in the military long before I was even alive. Wow! Yeah, I, I think one one thing that we can take out of uh, take from this is uh, in the Brony fandom, it doesn't matter if you're high rank or not, as long as you're first. And unfortunately, you're not. <laughs> but I mean, he's he's really cool about it. Um, he, he he he's very passive. He's a, he's a very kind individual. Uh, prior to this. I thought, you know, probably military people in general didn't like didn't have a sense of humor, and it was because the way that people have told me about our national service here in Malaysia, it was just day in day out, march, 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 and then um, one day of sh- one day of firing an M sixteen, and that's about the end of your training. So I thought, you know, people in the army didn't have a sense of humor and um, really didn't engage in any of this. I thought they were basically almost brainwashed people, to be honest. I'm sorry, you know what? That's that's. That's not even, uh, that's not an uncommon belief, but holy crap, you are so wrong. <laughs> yeah, and it took actually, mostly wrong. It took Fob Equestria to change and give me the paradigm shift to tell me, yeah. you know what? The army knows how to have fun. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what we try to do. But I mean, seriously, Mish, though, you say that's like half true, but come on, how many Marines well, really do have a sense of humor? They're Marines. Probably a, probably a well, Marine hold thing. on, I can. Definitely attest the fact that my old staff in TOIC did not have even <laughs> half of a penny worth of a sense of humor. Yeah, but that man, the staff no, that's the that man slept in a one man. That man slept in a one man squad bay. I assure you. <laughs> as, I, as I said, I'm just thinking about how. Life would have been for them. It's like day in, day out, they have to do the same old things. Because in some countries, I don't know about the states, but other countries where they like to put in um, hardcore discipline and all sorts of things, I think it's pretty much a bit like that here. You know, no outside contact, and people die in you know local national service because wow. we don't take care of them properly. They Damn. have you know rape cases, bully. Sorry, Ooh, that was Generation One. <laughs> Regardless of Generation 1 or Generation 200, it still shows and reflects on how we treat our country and how, you know, things are like, th- things are going on here. Probably that's what contributed to my perception, my skewed perception of the military. And then Black Griffin came down here just a few weeks ago, and I thought the military <coughs> band was going to be the same thing. You know, people standing up, sit down, take up drumsticks, 
and you know, take out the guitar, tune the guitar and stuff like that. It was probably going to be so systematic, it was going to be boring, and I just couldn't wait for it to be over. But it just threw everything out the window. It was, it was just amazing. And uh, I, have to, I have to say that, you know, I owe a lot of... Um, I owe a lot of the current perception I have to FOB Equestria. Thank you for, you know, changing the way I think about the military. That's, yeah, that's, that's what we try to do. It, it's yeah, that I, I a, mean, lot of pe- a lot of people will ask us uh, questions that, you know, that they just don't know how to talk to, they, they don't know how to talk to uh, the military. And they don't know, that, you know, most of the time they get their information from what they see on the news or whatever somebody else movies. tells them. Yeah, yeah movies. Gun movies. Heart movies. <laughs> locker. Like, the, the easiest, the easiest thing for me to uh, make an example out of would be, uh, for example, uh, just for My Little Pony. All of Equestria's uh, royal guards for Celestia are white, and they all have the same. Uh, they have the same armor, and they all sound the same, and they all kind of act the same. And just kind of uh, what, what I've always thought is that the that Hollywood likes to create these kind of TV tropes of what soldiers are in the movies because they, they need a caricature to perform something in the plot line and it doesn't actually involve us. So usually it ends up being soldiers end up being like some sort of cannon fodder or some sort of faceless disciplinarian or some like raving nut job or something like that. And it, it's, it's not really indicative of who we are. I mean, in the mili- in the Marines, you know, we're they they are really really big on discipline, and there's stuff that we cannot do and we will not do, and we understand all these rules, but we don't totally lose our sense of absolute individuality. We don't lose our sense of who we are, and it just makes us laugh even more. It makes us it makes us more humorous because we have to have that sense of humor. So to, yeah, just it keeps to people op- alive. Well, it keeps people alive and also keeps them from losing their sanity. And yeah, also, <laughs> also, it also means that because we get trapped in doing stupid crap, we end up having ridiculous senses of humor. <laughs> that might be a little oh, too okay. much for uh, <laughs> Way too much for the general population. Yeah, so, we're not like, like, to the jokes. extent of pranking people in bed or something like oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. Very... Uh, Santi, do you want to explain? I uh, will not explain this. Generation. Just go watch Generation. Yeah. Go that on, is what? the best way to explain. Watch Generation Kill. You will understand <laughs> military humor. Okay. Uh, okay. No, but from from my, I, I think I remember one guest that Dusty had. He was a military guy. I, I think an army. I don't really remember. And basically, he told he from what he explained was um, during boot camp, the what, what's the guy who's in charge of um, drill sergeant? Drill, yeah, the drill sergeant. He said that the drill sergeant was all serious and whatever is like rah rah very rough, but once he ranked up, he met with his old drill sergeant and his drill sergeant was an okay guy. I think. Yeah, I mean, tweak is tweak is exactly the same way. But that's that's because they're trying to train people. The the thing that drill sergeants and drill instructors are trying to do is train people uh, for both hardship and combat. So if you can't take being yelled at and being verbally abused a little bit, how are you going to be able to manage yourself in a much more stressful environment? And it doesn't even necessarily have to be combat. I'm sure you've noticed that even in crappy office environments, things can get way too stressful. Oh, yes. You don't get it. You Absolutely. don't get a chance to just break off and say, "Well, no, I, I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take the weekend off, and I'm not going to worry about this." That happens in the campus do. environment as well. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's just it's part of their training. So the drill instructor, or the drill sergeant, has to be a certain way in order for you to get trained in that way, in order for you to build up your endurance, or for you just to have a kind of muscle memory response, so that you don't have to think about what the right thing to do is you just respond properly. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So, so yeah, I mean just look at Tweet, he's a drill instructor, you can see the Wonder Bolts react and then you listen to his uh, reviews. Oh. Tweet's a drill sergeant. By the way. Uh, oh. Saunter. Did I really say that? Yes you did. You said drill instructor. Jesus. Uh well for <laughs> all the <laughs> for all the viewers uh, the difference between a drill sergeant and a drill instructor is the army has drill sergeants, the Marine Corps has drill instructors. 
Oh. Drone structures <laughs> are much scarier. <laughs> yeah, you better be. You better be, Saunter. You push, right now. push you until picture. I'm tired. <laughs> just, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. As it starts with a display picture, just look at it. Just stare at it for five minutes. You'll be scared. <laughs> <laughs> just keep pushing. You know what? That actually yeah, explains it. <laughs> hmm. so, I would just die. I mean, there's a reason why I do not. I never considered the military because I'm just a wimp. Hmm. I wouldn't be able to take that kind of stress. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Dan? Yes, sir. Do you, know, do you have any questions that you want to continue asking before I move on to YouTube's? Oh, uh, yes, actually, one more. All Is right. that now that, you know, you, you're close to celebrating your first anniversary of Fob Equestria, yeah, i got to get used to pronouncing it as Fob. I've been pronouncing it as yeah. Apple for the past <laughs> year or so. Have you heard of Apple? Saucer, you better still be pushing. <laughs> you better still be pushing. And uh, I was going to say, uh, are you all going to have some sort of anniversary jamboree or something where all the military bronies can meet up and talk and chat and well, have fun? actually... Considering our idea was conceived at the Military Brony Luncheon for the Brony documentary, we have decided that we were going to, in a show of respect and admiration, have a, um, a luncheon to celebrate the, I guess, the hard works and efforts of the Brony documentary for the fandom. And we are holding a luncheon for them. Wow. So is this one of the secret projects that you two are working on? Well, it's not secret anymore. We've announced it. But okay. yes, we've been work- We've been hard at work trying to arrange the logistics of it. Wow, that's awesome. So who's going to be there besides the film crew? Hopefully all of the, or most of the staff for Fabo Equestria. Ah, so- Santa, are you still going? But, uh, no, it was Navron who was tentative. Uh, I should be going. That I, I should be uh, going. I know that we're going to be trying to get other people into it as well, but uh, we haven't pushed that out too far. We've just kind of announced what we're doing. Basically. Uh, so King Harold will make an appearance? Yes, he will. Yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Is he still in the military or is he a uh, veteran? Well, he's a... Uh, he's kind of... It, it's it's uh, weird the way... Well, in, uh, uh, Norway, Norway has... Norway has um, uh, conscription, so he served um, because it was mandatory. Oh. Uh, but now oh, he works okay. as a now he works as a, a contractor. Oh, oh. wow! Mm, it's that kind of case. Okay. Okay, yeah. Singapore. So I guess now I know why they're Singapore bronies in the military because they all have to go through it as well. Yes, yeah, same here, oh. but um, no, over no, we there. don't have to go through it. They have to. Yeah, true, but they have the option of do I want to keep doing this or do I want to GTFO? They have yeah, to keep doing it. The... If Singapore goes to war, Singapore is the army of Singapore. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> I know the brain that, that we were uh, talking to, Singapore Bernie said he's going to serve the rest of, I guess, his uh, uh, conscription period and then he's probably going to try and move to Vermont, open up a, a uh, Chinese uh, food shop, which <laughs> is actually pretty awesome because... You know, Chinese food in the United States is not Chinese food. It's Panda Express. So it's... It's what? It's, it's, it's like saying... T- yeah, right. <laughs> what is correct? It's, it's it's like it's like calling Taco Bell Mexican food. It, it's really not. It, then, it doesn't taste like Chinese food. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Panda Express, like this year, opened up a, a few locations in China. So oh. they call themselves Chinese what? food. <laughs> the, way the Chinese people recognized it. <laughs> You know something? Wait, wait, wait. Kentucky Fried Chicken in Malaysia isn't really American food. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. What? <laughs> that mean, uh, okay, Kentucky Fried Chicken, not so much. McDonald's here serves porridge. No, it's basically... Really? Yeah. Yes. No, uh, yeah, then, and ponies for now, but yeah. yeah then, for for the um, Chinese food not being Chinese, uh, have you watched Iron Man 3 yet? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you know Fine. the history of fortune cookies? <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. And um, for meals, with like over here in McDonald's, Malaysia, we have porridge. And if I remember right, um, in KFC China, they have porridge too. It's based on country, really. 
Yeah, they, they do a lot of their lo- – all these chains do a lot of their localizations uh, so that they don't get, like, driven out of the marketplace. I know uh, – Yeah. You, you, you might recognize that uh, in Japan, they don't cook most of their uh, uh, McDonald's uh, hamburgers and cheeseburgers with a lot of grease. They Because Not the, the Japanese – yeah, the Japanese diet doesn't really involve that. But once they started seeing Americans walking through the door, they just fry, they just run up the, the greasers and the fryers and all that stuff. And they just line everything with grease for the American show. Oh, God. Uh, I mean, and also here, another problem here is that I don't know why our McDonald's is a scaled down version. Everything here is smaller than that of the McDonald's outside. We don't have super size, we only have regular uh, large. But then, the thing um, is. Uh, can you finish it? That's the thing. Can you finish it? I can finish 10 of those things. Yeah. The thing is, in America, it's not that everybody else is, is really small. It's that it's that ours is freaking giant. <laughs> it's like, I'm yet yeah. to see one. And the th- thing Would you like a go. small? Would you like Sorry? a small? How big is it? 32 <laughs> ounces. Sure. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's not that big, but gross exaggeration. But it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Oh, well, no, the Angus burger, though, the, the Angus burger is like 800 calories, and it's the size of your hand fully extended. <laughs> yeah, I've had one of and those in Australia. It's, it's like an inch thick. Wow. <laughs> they don't even have that here. Okay. And uh, we, have, um, we have problems because we are um, an Islamic country, so there's no pork, there's no bacon. Oh, right. So yeah, right. We have yeah. to get out of the country if we want to have the pork burger. Yeah, like... In Thailand, you have you can have the Mac pork. <laughs> it's the samurai pork. Oh boy! But, <laughs> but but anyway, um, about your YouTube channel. So, what do you guys post on there? Yeah, so uh, we put on uh, mostly just our React videos and our podcast, but we also put down. Uh, we also upload our um, what are they called? Our interviews and stuff. Oh. We've got a bunch up right now back in Canada Gardens, and then we got. Uh, I think it's still pretty awesome that the. I was still able to interview um, Andrew WK. Oh, oh yes. that's awesome. I saw a bit <laughs> of that. I don't know why it only has like a thousand views. It's kind of, it's too small. We have uh, uh, Tara Strong and Michelle Kreber and... Uh, well, actually, most Rod. of the... Um, most of the actual voice and writing talent of the show, I believe. I think we're missing uh, Ashley Ball... Um, like one or two others. Yes, we're missing Tabitha. Um, we haven't got most of the writing staff. We only got like a couple ones. I, I think we got Megan McCarthy. Yes, we did. Um, yes, okay. We're pretty oh sure. yeah, that's right. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, she said she well, wants to play ukulele for us on Twitter, so we're totally doing. Yep. That. Oh yeah. Um, Amy Keating Rogers, right? Uh, yeah. We got her as well. And uh, Megan McCarthy. Oh, oh Casey Westlook, uh, Westlook we got. Uh, we also um, got a while, too. That, that was actually, like, really popular because I guess nobody, yeah. like, interviews her that much and all her fans, like, just uh, attack that interview. They just loved it. They, like, <laughs> names out of it. It's pretty awesome. If you want to find Ashley Ball, I mean, just get a hold of Hey Ocean sometime. Yeah, well, she's a very hardworking, dedicated individual, so she's hard to get to. Yeah. I mean, I would love to go to a Hey Ocean concert. I'm a big fan of Hey Ocean right here. And that moment I saw the Malaysian flag in their video, I'm like, yes, please come, please come, please come. <laughs> I, I'm currently looking at your YouTube page right now and um, equestrian uh, interviews. Uh, you, you do a lot of interviews. And uh, how, how, how is this set up? Because I see that you guys um, sit on a chair and just talk to your was- guests. Is not getting simpler than that? At, yeah, that was all at uh, Canterlot Gardens. Uh, the the interviews we did there, uh, we were still really well, experimenting. Not all of them. Well, not yeah, not all. all. Of them. We also had the uh, Las Pegasus interviews. Yeah, right. Actually, uh, just a curious question: Did you all do those in collaboration with Saber Spark? Because they look like the same. They look like the exact same place that he shot some interviews for the new Brony Chronicles documentaries. Do he did. Um, well, that's no, uh, we did not collaborate with him, but the, um, the cons would have pre-designated uh, interview areas. So it's just uh, whenever okay. 
whenever we got a hold of them, we would just interview them, and that's where we would go to interview. So you, oh, okay. you would see I a lot of overlap for that. Because I saw that location, and I'm like, hey, it looks familiar. Actually, Mish, you're a little bit off. That's probably true for LPU, but for uh, Camelot oh. Gardens, it was weird, because they did not uh-huh. have a press room. So we actually went and uh, talked to the staff, and then we set up a press room, and then we saw uh, Everfree Radio and Sabersfark walking around trying to figure out how they were going to get uh, uh, interviews done. I, and we recommended to them, hey, look, we just set up a press room. Why don't you just bring up all your gear and all your stuff to this one room, and we'll have people shuffle in, and we'll do interviews that way. And they were like, hey, that's a great idea. I can't believe we're cooperating on this. Because they were all really worried about stepping on each other's toes. And, uh, oh. I guess sometimes oh, the me needs to be reminded that you should cooperate often. Well, I'm like a squid well, Why don't we take all the interviews and put them in the press room? There's a bad trick, actually. Yep. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I will elaborate and say that we used um, uh, Celestia Radios. Um, what is it? They're a uh, little over... They're the... Their little sky view, yeah, it was like a sky box room. Uh, we used that um, to do our interviews because Celestia Radio is awesome and Shamrock is like the coolest person ever. I need to meet Shamrock. I mean, like, he's in he, Australia, right? Uh, no, he is in, I believe, Arkansas. Oh, okay, right. I mean, oh. If he was in Australia, then I should be seeing him soon because we're, like, so close. <laughs> Closer than the states, and like the people from Australia showing up for BronyCon. That's an embarrassment to me. You, you, you don't have the cash. You just don't have the cash. Don't have the cash. Don't have the luck. Indeed. Not yet. One day. So uh, I'm looking at your page here right now, and um, I don't see the Andrew W. K. interview. It's just a snippet. It had a oh. teaser. Uh, no, no, we, we should have the interview. Hmm. Oh, unless you have a second FOB Equestria page. FOB Equestria, bro. FOB Equestria. You know what? I wonder, I wonder if it's on Spangle's page. I wonder if he oh, yes, it. that one was. I remember he... he oh, never, yeah. Um, search uh, Spangle Pony. It should be on his page. Because yeah. um, at the time, we had... Uh, when we did those interviews, we had a copyright claim made Ooh. against us for our um, military bronies react to teens react to My Little Pony. Okay. Um, so the Five Brothers the fine, you. Yes, they um, oh. did a copyright claim on us saying that we were inf- inf- infringing on their copyright of teens react. And we basically said, no, this is fair use. In the same way that you are using fair use for My Little Pony, we are doing fair use on your React videos, and eventually we won that, um, and they got put back up, uh, but Spangle never migrated the videos over to our uh, main channel. I'm going to have to audit him for that. Oh, but I mean, okay. it was like, uh, how do you say, did they come up to you because you used the whole concept of people reacting? Um, no, they said um, that our we were demeaning them, that uh, we, we were basically degrading their image. Yeah, it was in a way. I mean, um, it, 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 it did kind of highlight also, their narrow-minded selves sometimes. Really. But they were also doing the same thing about My Little Pony and having a bunch of immature teenagers <laughs> kind of going out and saying, oh, I wouldn't do this. Like, this must be for gay people. <laughs> or like, something like, like that. A brony for macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would be a brony, but I'd only do it for macaroni. And then my head exploded. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, uh, do they think I'm on the other side of the street, but I'm not? <laughs> so, like... We, we won that. Like, it wasn't very difficult, but they, they made our lives very, hard. very hard. <laughs> okay. Well, we had, to, we had to wait 30 days for this crap to get sorted out. Mm. But they suspended your channel or something? Uh, they oh. made us... Yeah, they had disabled the video, and then um, we couldn't upload videos longer than, like, 10 minutes, and then they... Oh, I think that thing. we won that, and then they put another claim in um, what? for, like, another 30 days, and we I don't think we could upload anything. Isn't, wasn't that true, Saunter? I don't remember. Like, it, it was a while ago, but, yes, yeah, so they, they had put out two copyright claims on us just to try to inhibit us from doing anything that we could to actually get the video up. Oh, those jerks. Messing with the military. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, from what I'm looking here is your, your channel. Next thing, next thing you know, there'll be kids react to military pros. 
Oh, boy. Oh, that's, what the, that's what all the commentators want to see. Uh, oh, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, no, I want to see a teens react to military bronies react to teens react to My Little Pony. <laughs> no! That title! Yo, dog, I heard you like reaction video, so I put a reaction <laughs> video in your reaction. Like, just, even if it's just like teens react to military bronies, I'm like, these guys are defending our country? <laughs> that you better believe it. No. Okay, I, I, I have to say something here. I know this. I know this uh, a video here, and the cover picture is really awesome. Um, I think I see Silvermane. Uh, Silvermane. Uh, who is it? Silvermane, John Delancey, Spangle, and myself. Yeah. I believe it is. Is that the one you're looking for? Yep. Looking and at? Silvermane looks really old. <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, he's been in the military uh, way longer than I've been alive. Also, Silvermane's the one who's been in since the 1970s. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, and when you when you say old, I, I thought it was, how old could he be? Well, no, that, that, that is old. Yeah. yeah, you can have one of your oh. questions in your book competition. Be like, how old is Silvermane? <laughs> Nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, from the right, it's Silvermane, Tweak, John DeLancey, um, myself, Mish, uh, or Miche, and Spangle is on the left with the tan oh. top cushion shirt. I'm the odd one out because I had wore the shirt uh, oh. the day before, uh, and it was kind of sweaty, <laughs> so I put on my Fusro Dye shirt. Oh, so, oh, i seen you in the documentary before. Yes, I am in the documentary. Ah, okay. That is awesome. Yay, where's the example? We talked to somebody who's in the documentary. We talked to Dusty Cat, but this is the second one. <laughs> and, well, also we talked to... Um, Purple Tinker, yeah. And also Tombstone, so... Nah. Oh, yeah, Tombstone's in the documentary as well. Darn, I gotta go and rewatch that. I haven't watched it for so long. Yeah, no, but uh, seriously... <laughs> fact, actually, I gotta catch up because I haven't even finished the first episode of the Brony Chronicles. I was so excited about that and I don't have time now. Uh, soon, soon. But anyway, um, how I, I noticed you have a podcast here, so how does it work? How What do you guys talk about? Uh, we generally talk about um, just random things that are going on with the fandom, um, a few military-related uh, topics. Um, a few times we brought on guest speakers. Um, just, I believe, last week or the week before, we brought on the um, some of the guys from Everfree Northwest um, to talk about... You know, what they're, what's going on with the con. I haven't seen that. I wasn't a part of it because it had uh, Equestria Girls. Spoilers. Oh. Uh, and I um, didn't see Equestria Girls until just last night. So I haven't, ooh, I haven't seen, seen it yet. It hasn't reached here. I have. Oh, uh, well, I saw it on YouTube because all the theaters, even remotely close to me, are completely sold out because oh. it's playing in, like, two theaters in Richmond. And Richmond is kind of a giant city. So you have every brony within a hundred miles trying to flock to these theaters. <laughs> oh, honestly speaking, um, I I just heard good things about the movie. It was amazing. Already. Well, not quite, not amazing, but it was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd well, say I, it's about an eight or an eight and a half out of ten. That is my perspective of it. I so kind I of know. Really That's the Rotten Tomatoes uh, rating. I think about eight point five. No, it's an eighty one, eighty two percent. Close enough. Well, eight to eight point five, I feel successful. True, indeed. I don't know. I mean, uh, I like before the movie came out, everybody was giving it a lot of flack. And personally, for me, I said, "Wait and see." I'm hype. And once I saw it, I want to watch it again. I want to own the Blu-ray and DVD. I'm still giving it flack until I watch it. So yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, get on it, Dan. I mean, like, I, I, why don't you ship me to the United States of America? I just sent you a link. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't watch cameras. Uh, no, but well, I get like, motion sickness. <laughs> I, well, actually, the the cam that I saw was one hundred percent stable. Uh, there wasn't a single bit of movement the entire video. It was one of the greatest cams I've ever seen. Which is saying isn't that isn't isn't saying much considering I think I've seen like three cams in my life. True, true. I generally um, don't like to watch things that I haven't paid for. True. It's amazing. There are bronies in every darn profession out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, disclaimer, we here on the MBS show do not endorse you watching pirated movies or downloading pirated movies. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> The opinions of this particular individual do not reflect the show, okay? So, Indeed. Yeah. I mean, 
I'm still going to see it in theaters, and I'm still probably going to buy the DVD because it was really good, and I would like to see it in decent quality. It's just, I blame Hasbro for not putting it out in more than three (laughs) freaking theaters in the entire state of Virginia. Oh, I I, I want to blame... If you're blaming Hasbro, I want to blame Hasbro for not putting it in Malaysia because I would have paid good money to watch it. I I blame Hasbro for not putting it on DVD the day it came out. Uh, No, how do you make money then? I don't care. I want to see it. (laughs) I I just wish they would make it a wider friggin' theater. Uh, Well... Uh, the way I saw it, it it was I didn't think it was as great as Mish thinks it was. Like I think it would, it's worth seeing once, but it's not one I would go actively to another movie theater for. I mean, I might buy the DVD, I might not, but I mean, it it, it seemed like it was a direct to DVD movie that ended up getting on screen, and I, I kind of with Daniel on this one. I think it just should have just gone straight to DVD and mm. buy it, deal with it then. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think I'm with Mitch because. Um, I find it entertaining and it got me thinking about oh this is a cool scene I want, I want to watch it again because some of the scene they were really awesome I think it's something about people like you and I who would like, just like to re-watch certain scenes again and again yeah, true no, I'm I the mean, kind of like, person that if I'm in front of my TV I will hit the rewind button to see it again I won't wait until I'm done Oh like, my. my! Like my view is, I think they either should have had a should have had a wider theater release for it, or gone straight to DVD. Because at the state it is now, it's not available to a lot of people who want to see it because they're freaking sold out, and there's only a few theaters that they're playing at. That I think that was a poor planning on Hasbro's part. But do just you... a question: Is it only in the states right now? Oh, it's also in Canada and Australia. Okay. No, but do you think that this is a plan from Hasbro just to oversaturate the market? Um, honestly, I I think that you or maybe go ahead. That up. Um, I think it's actually a, a more devious plan. Like, I think they might actually release a full sized uh, movie. Because I mean, for God's sakes, Hasbro released the Transformers movies and released um, what you call it, Battleship movies. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I honestly yeah. think that what they did here was they tried to test the market and see that they're just going to put this limited release out. It's not going to make a huge deal of money. They're still going to make most of the money off of the DVDs and the DVD sales, but they're trying to see just how many people they can actually draw to the theaters. And I actually, think this is kind of like a weird market study before they yeah. actually try to produce a real movie. But Sandra, no. I think you know there's some merit to that because there has been – some news about a live action My Little Pony movie now. Uh, no, it's not gonna happen. Not Dan? Happen. I, I guarantee yeah? you with a high no, degree no, no, of no, accuracy. No, it will no, 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 no. I know, I know I sound like I'm really doing stuff, but this is what, you know, was on EQD a few days ago. You check the link in the Skype chat. Yeah, Dan, that's a discussion. Discussion usually. It's an are announcement. Not... There's a difference. People don't I reject your stuff. reality and supplement <laughs> my own. It's not going to happen. I don't want it to happen either, but it's like... Well, I think I can agree with Saunter that they kind of didn't know what they wanted to do with the movie. They they know that the the Bruni fandom is an immense money potential group, the potential of income, um, but they didn't want to overcommit to it, so I think they were kind of testing the market with this, but I don't think they're going to release another movie within the next year or so. I think it'll be at least another season or two before they think about it. True. Okay. And this will take... A movie of this scale would take significant amount of time to produce. And if they're right, going to do it, they're really going to want to come up with a bang. That's why, um, like, my theory is the next time that they do a movie, they're going to outsource it to a different studio. Because they... Studio B, now, is the one that did the animation and they did the... Um, for the show, they did, yes, they did the animation for the show and for Equestrian Girls. And when they had announced that season three was only going to be, I think it was like, what, 12, 16 episodes? 13. 13. The first, 13, okay. Um, 13 episodes. The first thing I said, and I'm pretty sure I said this on a podcast, so my foresight and psychic abilities (laughs) are recorded forever in history. I said, they're doing this, I guarantee you, because they're making a movie. Um... (laughs) And because everybody called you crazy back then. With, with the, what they were doing.
doing the – they took a very successful show and they cut it down short. Why would you do that? Well, it's becoming more successful. You wouldn't cut back. The only time you do that is if is due to lack of manpower. Lack of manpower is most likely due because you're putting it somewhere else. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to hire another studio – uh, for another movie. So what I'd say we would be looking out for in the future is look for a a pay sum, I guess, um, to another studio for an unknown title. Hmm. Or an unannounced title. Because they're going to try to keep it really, really hush to try to make a, as big of an impact as possible, but they have to make their financial records and like all these things need to be publicized so they're gonna so we'll have clues well in advance okay um, okay so um i think you can say um if it's true you said it here first yes so anyway um, i think we could just move on past the pony questions because um what else can we talk about ponies so being guys in the military being servicemen you guys do have a lot of free time so do you guys play video games Free time? We have a lot of it's free time. <laughs> free time? I can empathize with that, yes. Free time? Yeah, I, have, I, I have more free time because I'm not active duty, but uh, I suppose I can try and answer these questions. Uh, I I do play video games, but I don't have that much wealth to invest in like new games, so I, I, I'm still working on trying to play Mass Effect 2. So a little bit behind the times. Uh, it's cool, it's cool. No, because um, recently, if you guys didn't heard, uh, Microsoft said that the Xbox One was going to be online only before they retracted what they say. So, and their excuse for the servicemen who wanted to buy an Xbox One but couldn't connect online. Stick uh, with the 360. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, yup, you are a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, they retracted that and made the console open, and you can just do whatever you want with it. So, yeah, um, the, um, I was going to actually ask you guys about that if you were really interested in it, because I remember that they were specifically saying that they were going to like region lock a lot of places. And one of the things that the military had an issue with that was that okay, so if, you know, the shame was in Okinawa. That means he's got no chance of playing the Xbox One at all because it's not in the proper region for it, and he can't buy one in Japan. So that's just not going to happen. I would assume that I'm pretty sure that Malaysia and Pacific Islands are all just in that same boat where they're, if they had stuck with the region lock, you guys would just be SOL. True that. No, the, from what I understand and from what I can imagine is they want to control their games with their release date, their legal stuff and other things just because let's just say that um, Halo 5 comes out. And it's only for the states because they want to maybe localize some things, make things, everything clean for Asia, something like that. Maybe Asia don't like blood, so they remove most of the blood. Like how Germany don't like the swastika symbols. And yeah, so basically they just want to localize it. The thing is, I like how Sony does it with their PlayStation 3. Their console is region free. You can buy any game from wherever you like. But the only downside is, if you want to buy any DLC, it's locked to that uh, this region. If Let's just say if I bought Batman Arkham Asylum, it's um, an American game, and I play it on my Asian account. It can't download any of the DLC. I need to create an American account just to download those DLCs. We've been doing that for years, Norman. <laughs> no, I'm just saying... I mean, it's true, it's but then, you know, that's the reason why... You know, they, they don't use, like, IP detection. And I think, you know, it's like a silent whisper saying, you know what, maybe some people upstairs have said, we can't show this to you, but we're going to let you do it anyway. Which is why I think I have an American iTunes account for the very... Actually, the only, the main reason I have an American iTunes account is because episode one of My Little Pony was free <laughs> on the day I became a brony. So I owe it to ponies for an American iTunes account. But even my Google account is an American account because... There's just significantly more features on it, and you know you have you can get an Asian account if you want. You can get a Malaysian account if you want, but there's no there's no real significant difference. Yeah, but what I'm saying here for the games is um, Sony is smart because sure buy the games, but you can't download the DLC without a certain account. So you like me, I wait for the games to come out locally. The thing that I made like a big deal out of 
or I tried to make a big deal out of was that I personally think that the Xbox One's plans were ahead of what the market was willing to do. Ooh, but yeah. I honestly don't believe that the Xbox is in the wrong in what it's planning. Oh, yeah. The, what, what they set up, I honestly think, is going to be the future of tech. True, but well, the way they handle they, it and... Well, the, sorry, Sonda, you finish first. But it's not going to help for right now. Oh, yeah. No, I it, think, nothing detrimental right now. I think what they did is they had the right idea, but they did it all wrong. Yeah, I in think that if you look at like if you look what they're trying to do, they do the exact same things as Steam. Steam has pretty much the same restrictions. However, the problem is Steam says we are an option. You don't need to use us, but if you want to use us, you have to do this. However, Steam offers a tremendous value for customers. I mean, sure Everything is locked to my account, da 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 online, DRM. Right, but when I can buy Bioshock, Bioshock 1, which is a fantastic game, even to this day, when I can get that for like $4, I'm not complaining. True indeed. Not at all. But when Microsoft is going to go out and release a console and not provide any further value to where I would take this over that, being the Xbox One, the X-Bone, <laughs> um, as opposed to the PlayStation 4, <laughs> which will offer most of the same games, but without those restrictions. True. So, whereas Steam, I can get a game for $4, but on a console I have to pay full price, why am I going to go for the console that op- that requires and demands all these restrictions when I can go for the one that doesn't? They had the right idea, but poor execution in that me watching cable on my X-Bone, well, that's not something I care about. I can do that on my PC. You know, requiring the connect at all time. Well, I don't see that as a good thing because I don't care about the connect that right, for me that is yeah to me that that is an issue because it's required to be used i can't do i can't use a regular power button i have to say xbox on i don't want to have to say that so to me that is an issue with it as opposed to a feature and mm-hmm. i think that's what they now that you mentioned it, I think I'm going to run around my neighborhood shouting Xbox One. Xbox <laughs> On, you know, it's just like... Xbone! At two, at two in the morning, I'll be like, Xbox On! <laughs> uh, oh, no. that would be horrible. <laughs> no, you, you want to know what's really horrible is? When you play your game, and let's just say you're on the last level of Halo, on the hardest difficulty there is. Legendary, I think. You're, you're just playing, and then like, your little brother or sister, Xbox, off! Or incoming call from Norman Sanzo. Oh. <laughs> because Skype is now on the Xbox. <laughs> oh, God. Have fun. My, my biggest problem with the x is not its features. It's security risks. I have a big interest in, you know, network security. Ooh. In okay. penetration testing. There's a reason that you're supposed to put black tape over a webcam when you're not using it. <laughs> Because they are so easy to hack. Look at the Kinect. It does even more. It, can, <laughs> it knows your heartbeat. It's always on. It is always on. Even when it's off, it's on. That is a big, big problem. And, and the problem is, it's required to activate your, three, uh, your Xbox One. And it's required to turn it on because there's no other way to turn it on except to have it on. So if I want to use it and be security conscious because I know... That's not a word. I'm going to hack that... That's not a word. The first day, <laughs> I have to unplug it every single time I'm done with my expo. I'm Wear a paper bag. have that. You, you, you know... <laughs> so, um, honestly, what happens if you just take the Kinect and point it at the wall? Um, no, it won't, it won't detect it. It sends your uh, body algorithm, your oh, okay. heartbeat, heart rates. It, it does all those fancy stuff. And then you can wear a paper bag and it still sees <laughs> you, right? So, <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, it can see through stuff? Yeah, but they're not going to see your photographic face, isn't it? It's not an, it's not an X-ray, it's an Xbox. Uh, I don't know. I heard horror stories. <laughs> when it's an imager, I can't really 
really see through anything. Even if it's even if it's faced towards the wall, it can still hear everything that's going on. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. have a problem with that. Oh, just imagine those happy happy couch time with your loved one. Hey, baby. <laughs> and your Xbox one's <laughs> picking up everything. And then, oh, wait, you know, hold on. Let me unplug the x <laughs> No, and, and, then, yeah. and then it's like, you know, if you want me to turn you on, it's like, turn on from my Xbox on. Mm. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Incoming call from God knows who. And you said, are you going to answer it? Don't answer. <laughs> oh, God, oh, no. Turn off the video. <laughs> Don't video enable. But I, think, I think the one that bothered me the most was they had a press release explaining why all this was still okay. And uh, the thing that most got to me was that they said, well, you know, your video games, they need to be checked in every 24 hours. But, however, comma, if you have downloaded music or movies, you can watch those without an online connection. Like, you son of a... How is it possible that you are justifying what digital type of media must have all of those DRM requirements, but another digital type of media, which is even more downloaded illegally, must not? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point there. You know what, Dan? I- I'm glad I have them on because you were so pro-Xbox... Um, I'm not actually pro Xbox to get this clear. It's that I never actually owned a console after the PS1. The only reason why I'm supportive of the Xbox is that I'm supportive of Microsoft. And actually, I, I like the way that it was an intuitive approach to a home theater system. And I basically am the kind of guy who doesn't give a flying feather, feather about security and you know privacy on the internet. So I don't mind having a webcam you, on sir. for hours. You, sir, have become a prime target <laughs> for the internet. Oh, boy. Well, unless you're going to come and send rockets at my house like in Iron Man 3. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. A lot of people share that mentality. However, from a security perspective, if I hack into your device, for all intents and purposes on the internet, I own your device. Now, let's, let's put this from a legal perspective that's something you might care about. So let's say I hack into your uh, device, right? Okay. I decide that I don't want to do anything illegal on my device, <laughs> and I can be thrown in jail. So what I do is I use your device as a vector of attack, and I commit said crime on your device. I then go and clear my history, erase all my footsteps, and guess what? That crime is now pointed directly to you. How are you going to justify that? Oh, I never did this. Well, it shows right here your MAC address, your IP. I traced it back to your device going into your house. Guess mm. what? You now go to jail for something I did. That is why you should be always mindful for internet security. Mish doesn't even have to make it illegal. It could be as simple as he starts you know, using your Xbox to like cheat on Call of Duty or something, and then your Xbox Live account just gets banned. Or your Xbox oh, yeah. Mac address gets banned. Okay. I I say, say I'm Mr. Anonymous and I'm a cool, awesome script kitty. <laughs> and I just decide that I'm going to do my part and do a ping tack T type deal on a web server for 72 hours. But I'm not going to do that from my connection because that would be hogging bandwidth. So I decided to do it from yours. Wow. And like the, now like you the lag. Yes. Mm. Um, so I have now saturated all of your bandwidth because I am pinging something for 72 hours straight. <laughs> Going back, I guess, to the, the whole point um, is that why would I buy a device that potentially potentially could cause all these issues to me when I can get nearly the same device and functionality from the PlayStation 4 True. without all this heartache. That is my perspective. Uh, PlayStation yeah. 4 and the X-Bone have virtually the same exact hardware. True. The only thing you're getting is I can run cable off my X-Bone, which I'm not going to do because I don't watch cable, so to me that's a pointless feature. So from my perspective, it's PS4 all the way. True. Actually, and, uh, that's the feature that got me sold for the Xbox, is because I viewed the Xbox not as a console, but as a home theater PC. That's Whoa, what sold me Xbox not a, Definitely not a PC. Don't even go there. I mean, you were home talking to home theater computer. A home theater system. Yes. It is system. not a, definitely not up to par with a computer. As Just in a, a personal desktop yeah. type computer. It does compute 
computer that which computes, yes, but it is not a home desktop or Actually, even a, a bit of a geek talk. It does run a 64-bit processor. Okay, then, 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 I, I, I think I know how to stop this once and for all. Does your <laughs> PC does does your PC do word processing? Yes. Does the Xbox One do word processing? I can make it do word processing. How? You can hack things, Norman. You sure? Um, well, hack that's Xbox not function- it. That is not functionality built into the device. You have to go beyond above and beyond what it is designed to do. The okay. Xbox is not designed Google. to do. Yeah. I use Google Drive. It's web-based. I can word process anywhere I want. Yeah, but technically, if it doesn't have a Notepad installed, it's not a. P- it's it's not compared to a PC. Dude, I have a phone that is comparable to a PC. No, no, no. See, Notepad. see, the thing but is, but it doesn't play actual like full damn video games. You get like freaking. I don't know, Angry Birds. <laughs> you can't compare that to like Far Cry Three or. Well, that's if you want to go there close. I think we ran a bit too long. So yes. um, let's move on to the next topic. But before that, once again, thank you guys for coming on and having this much interesting talk that we need. I'm sorry I'm dragging around, guys, because I haven't had a chance to geek <laughs> out with someone for a very, very long time. Thank I you can so tell. much. You're welcome. I love geeking out. It's kind of my thing. Yay! <laughs> and thank you, Sonda, for um, tolerating me of us. It's okay. I'm just trying to clean my gutters. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Then. So let's Is that move. military jargon because I didn't understand it. No, really, I have to clean my gutters. It's going to rain. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 okay, right, okay, right. okay, okay. Then. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> and the next topic is shout outs. Uh, my shout out goes to you, uh, Sother and Mitch. Uh, well, I am not talking right today, uh, Mitch. So <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking with us. Thanks for sharing your experience with us. You're welcome. I was very happy to be here. You are still welcome. And Dan, what about you? I'd like to shout out to both of you as well, Sandra. Thank you very much for, you know, getting back to me on the request that I sent out quite a while ago. Yeah, we were wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, because, um, how do you say, they were going to respond and I was looking maybe one week we couldn't find a guest then we could just call on FOB and then, oh, FOB Christian! Ah! <laughs> <Get used to. laughs> FOB is still okay, FOB is still okay. No, when it comes to FOB, I think fright on board, so that's different terminology altogether. <laughs> and... I think that this has been a really, really awesome episode and we learned so much about how, you know, bronies are a totally different demographic of bronies. It's been really, it's really been an honor to have you all on. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And another shout out to King Harold because I think he responded to the first email. Yay. <laughs> so, guys. And one last one, actually. One more shout out, yeah. To Paleo and Saber Spark for the Brony Chronicles. Didn't you just give them a shout out last week? Yes, because last week I hadn't watched it yet. And now that I've watched a part of it, excellent job, guys. I love oh, it. Okay. So what about you guys? Uh, Sansa, you got any shout outs to give out to? I've pretty much given a shout out to all, pretty much the entire staff and all of the affiliated uh, groups that are also military burnings as well that I can think of. Yeah, okay, cool. So, what about you, Mitchie? Uh I guess I'll give a, uh, a shout-out to First Awesome Platoon. Uh, they do a lot of really good work, and they've uh, helped out Fabo Questioner for, uh, a few times. And I'm also a staff member um, on uh, First Awesome Platoon. So, All right. What is First uh, Awesome Platoon? Just a short synopsis, I guess. Um, they are a group of civilians and military who do uh, pony Vietnam era uh, <laughs> comics. Wow. Oh my. Okay, you gotta check that yeah. out. Yes. You He's quite the- a good artist. <laughs> you drop us a link, we'll put it in the show notes. Uh, mm-hmm. Sure. Okie dokie dokie then. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can always contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com and that is also the same address for the contest. And also, if you would like to Email us personally. You can reach me at norman at com and daniel at daniel at com And also Twitter. We are on Twitter. Twitter is active. You should tweet us. And the show's Twitter page is at the MBS show. And I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And what about you guys? Do you guys have Twitter? Um, I do not. Well, I do, but I never really use it. Oh. So I guess no. Okay. What about you, Sanzo? Well, there is a there is a Fab Equestria Twitter uh, it's just at Fob Equestria, F O B E U Estria. Okay. F O B E Q I R S T R I A. All right. Thank you. 
I, I'll add that in the show notes. That's awesome. So anyway, <laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like our Facebook page. Um, by the way, talking about iTunes and Facebook page, you guys also have an iTunes and Facebook page, right? Uh, wait, uh, iTunes? For your podcast? No, you, your podcast. Oh. Just oh, YouTube. No, and... oh, we upload our podcast to our YouTube page. Ah. Okay. So that's YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, right? Yes. And also the website. Yes. Okay, I'll add that in show notes. So, um, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. Santa. Sorry, my internet's breaking. <laughs> Slaughter Hub. And this is Mache. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. See ya. You know when I first saw you, I did not know it could be true. Someone on the ground like me could be with.
All right, in housekeeping this week, we like to remind, it's like a public service announcement, actually, 29, 30. By the time this episode is published, there will no longer be ponies in McDonald's, so skip that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good update. <clears throat> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Straight one. <laughs> oh, date. Um, I, I have something, so three, two, one. Could you guys explain what is it? How how does it how is it run? Um, so Optimus um, Prime, uh, your standing your again. Standing again. <laughs> just imagine Optimus Prime just strangling him and he's like, "Let me talk." <laughs> Santa, that, that would be pretty good if I could make an Optimus Prime impersonation. <laughs> you pretty much just did. <laughs> I don't know any lines. From